بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أسعد الله أيامكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سادة المشاركين والباحثين في جانب البحري والتحكيم البحري حضورنا الكريم ودنا أولا نقول لكم أسعدنا مشاركتكم معنا في هذا البرنامج الأول راح يكون هناك لنا كلمتين الكلمة راح تكون لرئيس المحكمة الأوروبية حد يشارك في كلمة يلقيها أمامكم لأن البرنامج معتمد من المحكمة الأوروبية وأنا أمثلة في دولة الكويت ورئيس المحكمة الأوروبية للتحكيم الأخ أستاذ مارو سامستان راح يلقي لكم كلمة باللغة الإنجليزية فإن شاء الله إذا كان بعد هذه الكلمة أي استفسار وبعدها راح يكون الكلمة للدكتور محمود عبد الفتاح الدكتور محمود عبد الفتاح هو رئيس الاتحاد العربي للتدريب المعترف بجامعة الدول العربية والوكيل الحصري لجامعة كولورادو بولدر في الشرق الأوسط فنأخذ كلمة الكابتن أو دكتور مارو سمرتسانز Yes, uh, Mr. You can, you can join it with us if you want to speak. There is my attendant, the course. If you can, please start for your speech, please. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, very clear for me. Great. <clears throat> um, I am glad to have this opportunity to open this training course which Captain Al-Faraji has organized. Um, it is a, a first step in uh, the, so to say, career of an arbitrator. Uh, it's easy to become an arbitrator. At the same time, it's not easy. It is easy because you have a friend who has a dispute. He can appoint you as an arbitrator. Uh, to be a good arbitrator is a different thing. And the training course is a first step. Um, of course, uh, experience um, is uh, fundamental as in any other business. And uh, this is acquired uh, in various ways. Um, one of the more uh, profitable one is uh, to act as secretary to the panel of arbitrators, because this gives us opportunity to learn. And we all must start from the beginning in order to learn. Uh, being an arbitrator means um, having to decide uh, a, as a private judge a dispute. Uh, this means uh, that in order to properly do it, one has to uh, comply with various rules and laws. And from the first point of view, procedural law is a basic start. And the essential rule in arbitration is to respect the rules of due process under which each party is entitled, has a full right to be heard, to respond to the other party and to prove her case. Um, this should accompany you, not only in your training course, but even afterwards, because if ever we do not comply with this rule at any time, all what we have done becomes useless. And we are not rendering justice, but uh, we are wasting the other people's time and money and possibly not correct. So the first point is due process. Another one is to comply with the procedural rules, first, of the arbitration agreement, which frequently means of a, an arbitral institution, and then with the procedural law of the venue, of the seat of the arbitration, uh, which law consists, as in any other jurisdiction, of two limbs. One is the mandatory rules which uh, must absolutely be complied with and the breach of which causes the nullity of the award 
and non-mandatory rules, which may be um, replaced by the arbitration rules of an arbitral institution. Then, of course, there is substantive law, because uh, the dispute will be governed by a substantive law. Now, the easiest thing would be that the parties establish which is the applicable law in their arbitration agreement. Frequently, this does not happen, and it is a source of problems, of disputes, and of challenges of the decision by the party which believes either earnestly or because it is not happy with the decision that the applicable law was wrong. Then when you start uh, dealing with the proceedings, um, you have to check um, whether um, the parties have duly appeared, have been served, Otherwise, they would not be able to uh, defend themselves and there would be a breach of due process. Now, um, uh, you would be um, holding this training course under the rules of the European Court of Arbitration, which is an institution which exists since about six years and which was formed under the patronage of the Council of Europe and which has arbitration rules which are different from the great majority of the other ones. Um, in few words, um, the first difference is that we appoint a sole arbitrator. If the parties wish three arbitrators, we appoint the arbitrators because we want to avoid all the problems which party appointed arbitrators uh, frequently uh, cause because of bias, of suspicion of bias and so on. Then, Time is of the essence, as you know, and the old say is that justice delayed is justice denied. So, uh, unfortunately, many arbitrators take it easy because they imitate the judge. And this is a vital point because parties turn to arbitration not because they want a judge like the other ones, they want something better. And if um, the decision uh, comes after several years, the innocent party is entitled not to be happy. So we have normally a deadline of one year. I'm aware that maritime disputes are different in various ways because of the location of the ship or of the cargo and because of the quantity of uh, possible claims, such bunker claims, collision claims, uh, <coughs> cargo claims, uh, demarrage, um, insurance claims. And then, of course, you have many parties which make maritime disputes very special because, of course, as you know much better than me, you have ship owners, operators, cargo owners, uh, brokers, protection indemnity clubs, and underwriters. So um, one needs to master all this. Now, another point um, which is of importance in our rules is that we absolutely want that the arbitrators allow the parties to prove their case, which means that they must decide which evidence to produce, which does not mean that one can produce entirely irrelevant things, but that if the object of the evidence is relevant, it has the arbitrator has a duty to allow it. And the last item is the appellate procedure. In the great majority of arbitral institutions, the word is final. Uh, as the Americans say, it is a one-shot exercise. But one shot is good for the winner. And the loser feels entitled to a second round. And since arbitrators, as I always say, are human beings, normally, not all of them, but anyway, m normally, they are bound to make mistakes and the parties are absolutely entitled to obtain that a second arbitration panel, in this case, three arbitrators, all appointed by the arbitral institution, in this case by yourselves, decides the dispute. So you see, this is different and it is important because there are many, probably too many arbitral institutions in the world but the majority of the rules are more or less the same. And uh, 
our rules are different in various ways, such as the ones which I mentioned to you, and uh, any council has a duty, in my opinion, to inform the parties when they decide whether to go to arbitration to, s to try at least once in their life uh, a set of rules which is different from the other ones. Now, I assume that uh, if I have not exceeded the quarter of an hour, I'm very close to it, so I would uh, like to let you work and uh, learn uh, and wish to all of you, to your chairman, um, who is very active, uh, to um, start this training course. The purpose is uh, to be, become a hub of maritime disputes in the Gulf, which may be interesting also for people not from the Gulf, because out of the many actors which we have just uh, reviewed quickly, many will not be uh, from the Gulf area. And everything will depend on how you learn, how you learn on the field, and how properly we conduct the proceeding. It is vital that we are up to the expectation of the parties and even above that. Having said that, I suggest to let you go and I would close my, my intervention. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Smatero. If you have just five minutes, if you have sure. five minutes for maybe somebody who wants to ask about something, if you can, please. Of course, please. Thank you very much. يا جماعة اللي حاب يسأل رئيس المحكمة الأوروبية عن أي ملاحظة أو أي استفسار في هذا الجانب سواء في التحكيم أو في مركز التحكيم أو المحكمة التحكيم في موجودة في فرنسا وفي إيطاليا وهو رئيسها بشكل كامل اللي حاب عنده أي سؤال يتفضل هو موجود لأنه بعدها بدقائق راح يضطر إنه يغادر لأنه هو حاليا خارج إيطاليا هو موجود في أحد المؤتمرات فأمانة يعني الحمد لله أنه التحق مع هذا المؤتمر أو هذا الندوة أو البرنامج اللي حاب عنده أي سؤال ممكن يتفضل يسأل الكابتن أو دكتور سمستان دكتور Good evening. Oh, good evening. Good evening. I don't know how the time was, you know. Uh, I will ask a question. Yes. My name is Abdul Aziz, first of all. I, will, uh, I would like to ask a question. But uh, I joined late, and I'm sorry for that. If you have mentioned it, so I deserve not to listen for the answer from you. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. if you did not mention it, I'd like to know about it. Uh, what makes the people choose the admiralty law for the arbitration always and not other institutions. Uh, you see why? Why to select it? Yes, because as I was saying, uh, our rules are different. Um, each one should know the differences in order to decide whether he is interested in our rules or not. The great majority of arbitral institutions uh, provide for a panel of three arbitrators so each party appoints its own arbitrator and then the two arbitrators normally appoint the third one. This gives rise to a great number of um, challenges uh, of uh, application for the removal of the arbitrator because of conflicts of interest. Some conflicts uh, really exist. Others are an effort by that party to get rid of someone who in uh, her feeling uh, will not be in favor of the decision. The second point is the duration. And while our rules provide for a duration, let's simplify things of one year, frequently the arbitration lasts at least two years. And there are arbitrators which lasted 10 years. In one arbitration in Kuwait, in which I was involved with the council many, many years ago, it lasted 10 years. We have won the case. We have won the case um, more than we expected. So I'm very happy of that. But I was not happy at all with the 10 years. So the second point. The third point and last one, which I've just mentioned, is that 
human beings and therefore also the majority of arbitrators, even if I could mention to you some names of people, I'm not sure they are really human, but anyway, they make mistakes. And so it's not good that the merits of the decision cannot be reviewed by anyone, neither by an arbitrator nor by a court. The great majority of arbitration rules do not provide for that and are even against this because they believe that the award is taboo. But we have taken a very sharp position. We say, no, we have a panel of three arbitrators who reviews the dispute. So in the first instance, we have a sole arbitrator. In the second instance, uh, we have three arbitrators. To me, to us, these are not only differences, but improvements. And the majority of people just accept uh, what is happening around them without taking the trouble of wondering whether this cannot be improved. And nothing is perfect and therefore we all need for, uh, to improve uh, what we can use in the interest of our clients if we act as for a party or just to serve in a proper way. It was a long reply, but I hope uh, it was uh, oh, clear. Was very satisfied. I'm, very, I'm very satisfied to hear your uh, answer, and it was very clear and short for me uh, to give me a more uh, wide vision about the court and its rules and its improvement and the most important competitive advantages of this court. I am glad. I hope next time we'll see each other because I can only see uh, Captain Alfaraji, and probably you don't see me. You're not oh, losing okay. much, but you can't see me. <laughs> Next time, <laughs> uh, because you. unfortunately, I, I'm talking from a mobile phone. I'm not... No, uh, no, it's a clear picture. I can see you. Uh, uh, can you? Oh, well, okay. Yeah. All right. Any other question? Assalamu alaikum, Doctor. Alaikum assalam, uh, This is Isam uh, al from Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's an honor to be here and to hear from you, Doctor. I'm really happy to participate in this uh, valuable course. Uh, I have got a question regarding the, uh, the language. Will it be uh, a challenge uh, for uh, an Arab arbitrator uh, to uh, tackle uh, cases, maritime cases, uh, around uh, the world? Uh, the other thing, whether uh, we have opportunity uh, hopefully, after um, uh, this pandemic uh, finishes, uh, we gather together in some occasions. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, um, as you know, there are not many Arab arbitrators. Um, some are very well, well known. There were the old oil disputes like Mr. Mahmasani from Lebanon, uh, another extremely uh, well-reputed arbitrator is Jacques El Hakim, also from Lebanon, but there are not many. And uh, sometimes the reason is the language. Sometimes uh, the parties prefer that the litigation takes place in English or French. Um, this is not a, by itself a barrier, because as I've done while I was sitting in arbitrator, um, we have decided that uh, the proceeding can take place in two languages. So it would be Arabic and English. In that case, it was Arabic and French. Of course, this means that documents, pleadings must be translated. Uh, and likewise, during the hearing, argument from counsel or evidence from the witness uh, would be uh, done also through a, an official translator, but it is possible. And of course, uh, if you have a maritime dispute in which uh, uh, the cargo uh, or the ship or the claim is linked to, um, to an Arabic uh, country, uh, it makes full sense that uh, the two languages be used. Because obviously, if you argue in a foreign language, you are at a disadvantage. As uh, the arbitrator as well, uh, it would be impossible for me, I do not speak Arabic, I 
could not sit because I would not understand anything. But if we use translators, um, if we use video conferences like this one, uh, a lot can be done. And one can avoid traveling because the trouble is that sometimes we travel great distances just for a short meeting, um, if it's not a full hearing, just for one hour, and we waste time and money. And now with the pandemic, we also risk to become ill. While a video conference like the one you're holding and the one I I'm, I'm prefer to attend when I have a computer in front of me, allow to see each other and to um, look into the eyes of the other one, which uh, for Mediterranean and Middle East people is more important than for Germans, uh, English or American people. In our tradition, we must look into the eyes of the other one, not only listen to the words. And this video conferencing system gives us great opportunity. So um, if uh, through the training course and in other ways, um, we are able to form a good team of arbitrators, um, they could very well act as arbitrators. Oh. The problem is, and I close with this because I'm taking too much of your time and I don't want that, is that uh, uh, we need the arbitration agreement. So the vital thing is that in all the various maritime um, uh, relationships in which you are involved, you see or you inform the operators to put our arbitration agreement. Because if this does not happen, there will not be arbitration cases, and you will not have the opportunity of being appointed, and therefore you, your learning through the training course will be like a drop in the desert. And that's not what we want. And I'm sure that um, your chairman uh, our friend and captain, will uh, uh, use all his many energies, which I know he has, to avoid this. This is absolutely the very last thing we want. But in order to achieve it, we must act ourselves. We cannot expect uh, that this comes down from the sky. <laughs> لا تفضل تفضل لا تفضل بالعكس انا انا ارحب بهذه الاسئله فرصه يعني تفضل كان كان طيب السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته جود ايفنينج دكتور جود ايفنينج يس ثانك يو سو ماتش فور ذا يور سبيتش اند فور يور فاليبل تايم اي بوت ا تايني كويستشن اف يو اف يو الاو مي تو دو ذات از از اباوت اي مين وات ار ذا ريكويرمنتس فيرست اوف اول اي نيد ريلي تو جاست بريزنت ماي سيلف ماي نيم از خالد بن عصر فروم سعودي اريبيا And my question is that uh, what, are, what are the requirements that uh, needed yeah. to be, uh, I mean, to have the membership of the European Court of Arbitration? And thank you. I didn't get the last words. Which are the requirements for what? Can you so say for, it again? For, for, for an arbitrator to be, uh, I mean, to have the membership of the European Court of Arbitration. Oh. Well, first, you must be liked by Captain Alfaraji. <laughs> 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 no, apart from the joke, which is partly true, <laughs> uh, um, you may become a member upon the proposal of uh, your uh, of this chapter, on the, and even if you may belong to the chapter, even if you come from Saudi Arabia, uh, if uh, your executive committee is in agreement, and so uh, in order that you become an arbitrator, then you should have completed this training course and other training courses and then uh, we need an opportunity to appoint you which entirely depends upon uh, the people you know um, using uh, our arbitration rules in their contracts and of course it takes time generally if someone puts 10 um, arbitration agreement of the european court in 10 agreements maximum one comes out and it does not come uh, the following day because the contract, the shipment, the matter has to take place to occur and then there may be a dispute. So uh, as I said before, nothing come, falls 
upon us from the sky. Uh, we have to build our future ourselves together. Thank you so much, Victor. So, uh, Doctor, thank you very much. I appreciate. I know you are busy, so I appreciate about the time you give me for the attend this course. So, thank you very much. If you want to leave, you have this time. If you want to say, if you can, it's uh, it's up to you, Doctor. 